Hello. My name is Quiet Dragon. I'm a time traveler, a ninja, and a secret agent, among many other things. In short, I'm an adventurer, and I travel all over the world in my one-man blimp, solving mysteries and fighting crime. Have I confused you yet? <laughs> the information I just shared with you is not completely true, as you may have guessed. My name is Maisie, I'm a student, and the farthest I've ever traveled was to Canada in an RV to go fishing with my family. <laughs> the person I described to you at the beginning of the speech was me. It was just a virtual version of me. This version of me lived in the world of Pop Tropica, an online virtual game where you travel to themed islands and solve the puzzles and mysteries that they hold. This game was extremely fun, and most of my elementary school classmates played it. My teachers, however, were not big fans of it. They would cringe when we would finish our homework as fast as we could so we could get online and start a new adventure. And it wasn't until a few years later that I realized just how educational the game of Pop Tropica actually was, and how it enhanced many of my comprehensive skills. So today I want to share with you some of the ways that Pop Tropica actually proved to be a valuable learning tool, and why you might find it valuable as well. Let's begin with the most important part of the game, conversation. I mentioned before that Pop Tropica revolves around mysteries and puzzle solving. The first thing you need to do after you land on an island and jump out of your blimp is talk to the characters on the island. When interacting with these characters, pre-generated speaking options appear for you to choose from. All of the interaction um, all of the interaction within Pop Tropica is based on text. When you ask questions and the characters tell you what you need to find or where you need to go, you need to be able to read to actually make any progress. I remember in elementary school when myself and my desk partner at the time were both playing and we both happened to be playing on the same island. We got to a point where he asked me how I had progressed to a certain point and found a certain item. I noticed then that he wasn't interacting with any of the characters, and I told him that's why he wasn't getting anywhere. He then got kind of defensive and kind of reluctantly told me that he couldn't read that fast and that the bubbles, the text bubbles were appearing and disappearing too quickly. So he kind of opted to just wander through the islands and just picking stuff up as he went. And in my fifth grade brain, that was unacceptable. <laughs> so I actually Googled how we might make his text appear slower. Because even then, I imagined that a game that had so much reading that was made for kids had to accommodate for reading levels. And it did. We went to his avatar settings and we changed the rate of the, rate of the text so that he could actually understand it. And he had a much more enjoyable and progressive playing experience. <laughs> Once you properly understand the direction and clues that are being given to you throughout conversation, you can start explore exploring with intent. You find specific characters, items, and locations, and you solve puzzles and complete side quests all by building up and strengthening your comprehension skills. And in preparing this speech, I found that this building and strengthening was not an accident. The creator of this game, someone that a few of you might be familiar with, was Jeff Kinney, the writer of this highly popular book series. <laughs> Kinney partnered with the Pearson Educational Family Network, a company that worked in creating safe and educational games for families in what is called the edutainment business. It's clever, I like it. Pop Tropica was the result of Kinney and Pearson's partnership, pairing Kinney's imaginative storytelling with Pearson's interactive education format, thus creating a fun, immersive, and skill-building uh, game that myself and so many others absolutely loved. And I say loved in the past tense because upon my nostalgic dive back into Pop Tropica when I was preparing this speech, I found that it will no longer be available in 2021. Now, Pop Tropica had been through changes before, like when the Pearson Network became a part of Fen Learning in 2015. 
Fen was a different platform, but it still ensured that Pop Tropica was supported and that it could be played as usual. But as of 2018, the official Pop Tropica blog has announced the ultimate end of Pop Tropica due to outdated technology. Pop Tropica was founded in 2007 and operated on Flash, a technology that will no longer be supported come 2021. In conclusion, I wasn't expecting to find my favorite childhood game would be disappearing forever. In fact, I almost scrapped this entire speech when I learned the news. However, I want you to consider this. There are current games out there that are like Pop Tropica, and while they may never be as great as the legendary original, I encourage you to give them a try. Don't be like my teachers that disliked the game simply because it was on a computer. We may not have realized it at the time, but it actually turned out to be a valuable tool, and it would feed our minds in way of education and imagination. And who wouldn't want that for a kid? Thank you.